so much for um, welcoming me into your home. It's absolutely beautiful. Oh, you. <laughs> I'm really excited about being here specifically because I really want my audience to kind of get an idea of how art can really transform the space. Mm -hmm. But well, it started with fine art prints, painting yeah. and fine art prints, and then we produced a home range from that. Um, and that business is still kicking, still alive and kicking today. We've got two of our own stores, yeah. um, one in South and one in Oakham. Um, but the interior side is something I've always been super interested in. So yeah, last year um, I sort of took a step back from the other business and let my team run that side of the homewares business. And then I um, sort of stepped forward into my interior design uh, career, which is what I'm doing at the moment, or co mainly like concentrating on at the moment. And also renovating this. Yeah, amazing. alongside renovating this house. Yeah, yeah. So that's where it sort of sprung from. We had to do this house up anyway. And then, um, yeah, I love sort of trying out new ideas on this house and then bringing them to clients. The way that you work is by putting loads of different patterns and colours, and you, the way that you. Um, I'm trying to think of the word, but stage something. Yeah. It just makes, it has just such a massive impact on how the way that the, the painting looks and it can really transform it. And I was at a house um, a few weeks ago and she comes from a gallery background and she'd done the classic white walls, white walls yeah. and the arms just, it was like a gallery and it looked really beautiful, but I wanted to show how you can um, yeah, you don't need to do that. It can be about your house being very homely and warm and how you can put patterns and different things next to paintings and how you can sort of work together. Work with your house. Yeah, I mean, art, in, when I'm putting a room together, art is always really important. I think it would make or break a room. Mm -hmm. But I don't start with the piece of art necessarily, although that is sometimes a really nice way of doing it. If you've got a room, that you don't know what to do with and you've got a painting that you love, well, start with that painting. Yeah. Choose the colours, pick some colours out, pick some textures out of that painting and it's such an easy, nice starting point. But equally, put a room put together. Luxury, do we? No. Some, some people don't really know. But yeah, sometimes your room's finished and then you see a piece of art you love and I think people panic about, oh my God, is it gonna go in the room? And I think as long as it's, I mean, actually, to be fair, even if it's like an old-fashioned room, sometimes a modern piece of art can work really well. Yeah. Um, but I think definitely a piece of art, or several pieces of art in a room, it, for me, it ties that room together. And then for me, putting a room together, it's, it's completely integral. I think there's some things you need to invest in. Personally, everyone's got their own opinions. But I think flooring, yeah. I think a good flooring is like a good pair of boots. You can wear a yeah. time like dress, <laughs> but you need to wear them with a decent yeah. pair of Not shoes. Bad. Yeah. Um, I think window dressings, curtains and blinds. Yeah. I think getting a professional in to measure them up properly and make them properly with the proper linings can completely transform a room. Um, and I think fittings and hardware, like, uh, Doorknobs and yeah. handles for your oh, kitchen yeah. and light switches. I think I think those are the things to invest in. And then I think there's things that you don't need to spend a fortune on. Um, furniture, go to antiques fairs, go to your like local flea market, Facebook marketplace, amazing. eBay, bought so much of eBay. Use Shipley, get it sent in. Yeah. Um, IACF fairs, they're the antique fairs, they go up and down the country and bought so much stuff from them. So interesting. Yeah, and you get it for like, for example, we bought a wardrobe for my kids' room, I was looking for them new, they were all made out of MDF, they were 1200 quid, I went to, went on eBay, found a wardrobe, it was 300 quid, it's oak, Wow. It's 200 years old. It took a carpenter about half a day to fix it up. Wow, amazing. And it would have cost thousands of years. So yeah. there is hundreds of years. And not that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the character. Yeah. Which, that, I love that wardrobe. Um, and I think artwork as well. Invest in some cool pieces, but also go to like flea markets and antique yeah. fairs and pick up paintings that you like. And you can pick them up for 20 quid. Yeah. Like mix and match. You can have a lovely big original next to some like thrifted bowls on the wall, which we've done in the yeah, dining room, which I can show you. Um, 
knickknacks like this I got from an antique fair. Like, what is it? Don't know, trivet. Does it look cool in this room? Yeah, it was like 50 quid. Yeah. And it's got this. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the stuff in this house has come from grandparents, yeah. things my parents didn't want anymore. Yeah. Sometimes you give it a lick of, pain, lick of pain. Yeah. But yeah, invest in your like, your, your really nice boots. Yeah. Invest in your solid, or your, your handbag, like, yeah. like, like yeah. invest in the bits that are going like, to yeah. make the outfit pop, and then the rest, you know, you can thrift and you can, you can get second hand. I think people panic too much about completely finishing a room. Yeah. But I think part of the fun is having the basic, the base of the base of a yeah. room done. And then it is going on a weekend away, you might be, I don't know, in Northern, you might find an antique shop. Yeah. And having this, you know, leaving spaces in your house to pick up things that you find and bring them into the home. And I think that's part of the fun as well. And I would always, you know, when I'm doing a room, I'd always leave spaces where yeah. I can bring in other things yeah. and go on like a gut reaction 100% and also yeah. if you love an item buy it you will find a space in your house <laughs> yeah, for it yeah, yeah. As, if, if you've got one of those minimalist houses then that might not work mm -hmm. but in my world of maximalism I absolutely love it <laughs> <laughs> if I see something I might not know exactly where I want it but I know that if I love it I will find a space for it and the worst case scenario, you don't find the space for it and you sell it on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 and yeah. you can probably make a profit on it if you get, get it at a good price. Yeah. Um, and the same with paintings, like if you love it and you see it in a gallery and you can afford it, buy that painting. You will find wall space, you'll come home and you'll be like, oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> or don't like that mirror, it's take it off. Yeah, 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 yeah. just buy the five things that you love. <laughs> Fill your home with stuff you love and your, your home will work. I've seen so many lovely pieces of artwork framed really badly mm -hmm. and that can ruin a piece of art as well so I think thinking about using a professional framer and even if you can't you know even if it's a print not everybody can afford originals yeah. which is you know I think prints you do beautiful prints I also produce lovely prints I think having a print you know you get 80% of what you get from an original yeah and but framing it really nicely can can completely transform that print from something that's quite sound into something lovely for an interior designer it's nice to find a set of artists that you can work with yeah and also when those artists do prints as well because you're working with different client budgets some clients will only buy originals and some mm -hmm. clients just want nice things on the walls and they don't mind if it's an original or a print yeah. and that's the nice thing about you is that you do the originals but you also do the print so there's something for for all my clients um and your color palette is definitely along the lines of my color palettes lots of nice soft greens and blues and pinks and stuff so i think um yeah it's nice for definitely nice for an interior designer to find people like you to work with and that's the kind of vibe i get from all from your home, it's really curated, but at the same time, it just feels like everything has got a place like your copper pans, like your sink, like reflecting off the dirty copper pans. No, I, I, I love them, and just all these little touches, like the floor is just, just gorgeous. The way that you kind of put it together, and that's why I always find I find it tricky in my own home to do the, all the finishing off, the, the finishing, finishing off, touches, yeah. just to make it. So I feel like the budget kind of sort of starts running out by the time you yeah. kind of get to the end of a, a renovation project. But then so later on down the line, you're like, oh, I'm going to buy that. But then fitting it within the space and styling it and making it look like it's supposed to be there and, and to its like, best potential. Yeah. I think that's what's going to be really fun to see, like how you can yeah. transform something. Do we get happy with Let's do it. Paint some paintings on walls? Yeah, I can't wait to see how yeah, you transform it. Yeah, it's so exciting. Okay, cool. Jenny, I love this painting. It's so nice. Oh. Absolutely love it. <laughs> Thanks um, so much. You're so clever. Um, so when putting a painting on a wall, especially a bigger painting, it can be quite daunting. What, what else do you put around it to make that painting sort of pop? Really nice idea is to put like a sideboard or this is like a drinks cabinet. I think this was 60 quid off eBay. Wow. So you don't have to spend heaps. It's amazing. Um, and then a uh, picture light above always works really nicely. Um, if you don't have the wiring for one, I'm pretty sure Pookie do a battery operated one now. Um, but picture lights are really nice, light from below as well from the sides. 
Um, I always think to frame a sideboard, um, chairs work really nicely. They don't have to be like expensive armchairs, just, I mean, these are dining chairs, but like upholstered chairs, you can pick them up from antiques fairs, um, just to bring it in like a rectangle. When you're dressing the sideboard, um, think about like a triangle. I always think about like an upside down triangle here. So you want to go higher to lower and then have a bit of a gap in the middle and then lower up to higher and it draws the eye into the painting. Colour wise I've sort of gone with some purples here because there's some lovely purples in this print. Um, you can see like in this bit and then in the um, trunks of the trees. Terracotta works because it's like a Mediterranean vibe and Jenny's used like terracotta pots. And then I always think candles are really nice, they soften up the area. People are always attracted to like looking at candles and then you're more likely to like frame your painting, get people looking. Um, but yeah, think about other things around that painting and then complementing the colours in that painting with your accessories. That's so amazing. And also with the textures, the textures that you've put in here, you were talking about how you put, how you take textures from the painting and then put them like, you know, use that as a complementary thing. And that's something I never thought about using the textures. And it's done so well here with this plant and the textures that you've got in the, the trees and the, the leaves and things in the painting. So clever, Katie. Oh, wow, you're the clever Thank one, Thank you so much. Amazing, <laughs> gorgeous. I mean, the painting speaks for itself, but I think it's always really nice when you've got something this big and stunning to, again, frame it nicely. And a really easy way of doing that is with flowers or plants. I just picked these from our garden. I have no idea if they're like, go together, but they're just my wild flowers from the garden. But I've chosen the pinks because there's loads of these gorgeous like pink bits in the paintings. But you don't have to use real flowers. You can use really lovely foam flowers. Um, there's a company called Excelsior that we use um, in our stores loads um, and they do the most gorgeous foam flowers. So, and, and you can get like a bunch of like 60 quid and they last for years. Um, so yeah, just pick out some of the colours in the paintings with flowers, that's a really sure win. If you're in like a kitchen or a dining room, buying some really nice, um, what is it called? Bookends. Bookends. <laughs> and then a few Lovely. like, I know, recipe books, whatever, that always oh, makes nice. it feel like home really nice. And we're also looking for that like, nice um, V shape. So we've got the nice tall plants going into books. And then we've got like a shorter candle base with a taller candle base. Um, and then the lamp always looks nice because the ambient lighting. We haven't got a picture light on this one, but that would also work really nicely. Mm -hmm. um, but the lamp sort of brings in that nice bit of um, warmth. Um, but I think, yeah, the scale of this painting works so nicely in this room. And I'm keeping it, so sorry, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> Not the, so the original was the one in the kitchen. Yeah. And then this is a print, but printed on board. Yeah, so it's what you call a special proof. It's a print on board. And I made that edition size um, only 10, to, so that it's like a still, you can have a big impact in your home, but without the price tag of an original edition. painting. Yeah, so it still has like value in the fact that it's a limited What a great edition. idea. And it, it, it's, it looks like an original, but it's not gonna cost you what an original costs. Yeah. Okay, amazing. And you can see like the difference in framing makes such a difference. Like it looks like a different painting to yeah, the one in the kitchen yeah. and just because of the frame. Again, I've gone for that like V shape, which is just classic and works really well. Um, but what I've done with this painting is I've put some other bits around it just to show you that you don't have to have just one painting on a wall and leave it at that. I always think they always look a bit odd when you just have one painting yeah. and nothing else. So I've put another original, this is actually my original <laughs> that I bought in 2019, next to it, which I think works really nicely, but doesn't have to be a painting from the same artist. Um, mirrors work really nicely, especially a contrasting shape. So if it's a rectangular painting, go for a circular mirror. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I try, try to mix and match the shapes up a bit. Um, this is a big painting and it can, this is a 45 centimetre lamp and I think it can 100% take a lamp this size. Um, cacti work really nicely because you don't have to look after them. So <laughs> I love that. I love cacti, just don't touch them. 
Again, I've gone for the same candles, but I've swapped out the candlestick. So this is like an orangey candlestick, which immediately changes changes the, the look of the whole thing. Um, try if the frame is white, try and use some white accessories. So I've got a white pot and a I white lamp, lamp base. If the frame's gold, use some brass or gold accessories. If it's black, try and get some dark colours in. That always works really nicely. And I think just the main point for this setup is don't be afraid of using other paintings around your painting. Also photos, they won't detract from the painting, it just makes it look really homely. Mm -hmm.